So the summer transfer window has concluded and we are at our first game of the season against Watford. Let's go see how it has gone. So in total we spent £177 million whilst bringing in £100 and 11 million let's quickly address the outs mick van slimming went and joined millwall for 22 and a half million pounds he was a decent enough striker he scored a good number of goals for us in the championship but that is a crazy sum of money for a player of his quality at 29 years old he was here medeiros left to join aek for 18.25 million a player i might have kept a hold of in another instance he did have some potential to grow but the amount of central midfielders we were able to sign and the change of formation which we'll show you shortly meant that he had to leave the club andy mabry left to join stuttgart for 16 and a half million pounds again another central midfielder who has been sacrificed he's another decent option as well but he wasn't even in our first 11 whilst we were in the championship ian gerard left to join eek for 16 million quid Again, another option we could have kept, but he didn't even do the business for us in the championship. Wednesday was getting first team football, so I was happy to let him go. Eddie Carlos left to join Millwall for £15 million. Our second choice left wing back at the time, and getting that sort of money for a 29-year-old is a no-brainer, at least in my estimation. Carlos Barbero, the guy we loaned out in January, left to join Perugia for £7.75 million. He's a winger. We don't play wingers, so he was unnecessary for this squad. Alfred Dionko, who was starting right wing back, someone who we probably should have kept in hindsight. £4.9 million to FC Copenhagen. He's a decent player, um, but at 32 years old, he doesn't fit in this sort of ethos I like to build with my squads. Kokada, he left to join Redden for three million quid. Again, I've signed a lot of central midfielders. Um, all the central midfielders at the club essentially became up for sale and he ended up joining Redden for 3 million. Rob Parks, you never seen. Will Denton, you never seen. Killian Adam have just ruined this boy's career over the number of clubs we've had him at. 325k to Angers. Hopefully he finds himself some first team footballer. And as you can see, we have ended up loaning out a good number of players. The main one of which was our first choice goalkeeper from last season. Klaus Chabert has went and joined West Brom. Uh, not West Brom, Inter Milan on loan for the rest of the season. And uh, there's a good couple of other VPN loans as well, but nothing to write home about. And that takes us to the ends where we will start with Edward Sid, our only loan signing of the season. <laughs> Look at this boy. How special is he? Now, as you know, once we get to the Premier League, I do sort of resist loan offers because I want to set up the club for the future. But this boy being available was just too good to turn down and... If you, as you can see he is an attacking midfielder and that probably gives you a little bit of a hint as to the change of formation but yeah at least in my estimation he's a world class attacking midfielder and he will be a number one starter for us we ended up signing Jack Poole from Manchester United on a free transfer a central midfielder English he fits the squad res registration obviously we've got a limit on the amount of foreign players we can have so we needed somebody like him three star current three and a half star potential worth 13 and a half million a free signing that's pretty good Matt Jackson was next to join us again on a free transfer. He has went out on loan to Getafe. I did initially sign him, anticipating him being our starting left wing back. Now, he was red there when he joined us, and I knew it was a mistake. Um, but obviously, a free transfer doesn't really matter. He's valued at 18 million quid now. But um, I've decided to loan him out to Getafe. We're not going to be managing him whilst in charge of West Brom. And it's purely down to his positional. Um, he might have ended up getting green by the end of the season, maybe. But it wasn't going to happen quick enough for me. And we had to go and find other options. Michael Botts come to join us in an English attacking midfielder. As you can see, he plays naturally in the centre of midfield and attacking midfield. He will be just be playing back up to both of them options. And I think he's a decent enough little player. Two and a half star current, three star potential. Cheap enough wages. And another freebie. Gerardo Marrero was next to join us, £2.8 million from Argentina. I did initially sign him to be our starting left wing back. He is not going to be our starting left wing back now. He will just be playing back up to him. He's got fantastic mentals, decent enough technicals, really, really great physicals. But uh, again, he's not natural in that left wing back position. So we have brought someone in who is natural. And uh, we'll look to give Gerardo uh, enough game time for him to be able to develop. But a two and a half star, three star. It's so probably not much to develop there. Next to join us was Yanis Bonman, one of our first central midfielder signs from Bayer Leverkusen for £6.75 million. Pounds. He's 18 years old. He can play defensive midfield. He can play in the centre of midfield. He is a wonder kid. He is really, really well-rounded. 
and he was the, the main reason why I had to sell Cork Carter. We're going to give this boy, I think he's going to be in our first 11. We're going to give him as much game time as possible. And at 6 million quid, I don't think you can complain too much with that. Sinan Sayan joined us from 1860 Munich for 7 million quid. Another wonder kid, another central midfielder, come defensive midfielder. Um, I think I anticipate him maybe playing in the defensive midfield. Four star current, five star potential, fantastic physicals, well rounded mentals, decent uh, technicals. As a ball winner midfielder, he's got 17 dribbling. 15 first touch, 15 free kicks. Um, it seems a little bit of a waste, but we'll wait and see how the season goes. We might end up playing him in a more attacking role in the centre of midfield. Next to join us was Bruno Cesar, one of our first choice centre-back. £7 million to bring him in. He's absolutely fantastic ball-playing defender. His physicals are good, not great. His mentals are fantastic. His technicals are great as well. Um, two and a half star current, five star potential does put me a little bit on edge. And five foot nine, he's not the tallest either. But um, it might be an area where we look to address again in January. I did look for other centre-halves, believe you me, I looked. And we still have plenty of money left to spend as well. We'll review that afterwards. But at least for now, he will probably be our first choice centre-back. Malik Music was next to join us from Wolfsburg for £7.75 million. He's not going to play central midfield for us. He's going to play right wing back. So we are training him in that position. Hopefully he can become natural in that position over the course of the rest of this season. But he's decently well-rounded pretty much everywhere. 18 passing is fantastic. His physicals are great. Mentally, he's decent. Technically, he's decent and well-rounded. So there's nobody natural <laughs> who I wanted to sign there. So we had to go with somebody accomplished. Next to join us was Thelani Malangu from Liverpool. 9.25 million quid. Just a striker, English. Obviously, we needed a, a good amount of English players coming in to fill out the rest of our squad. He's not going to be a starter. He will be third choice striker. Um, and I'm happy to bring him in. He's got pace. He probably caused some problems off the bench. And if we do ever revert to a winger system, which I don't anticipate doing, he is natural there as well. Next to join us was Arnold Gonzalez from UV for £9.25 million. Probably the best central midfielder we signed, I would say. Very well-rounded physically, decent mentals, decent technicals. He can play a defensive midfield or attack midfield should we need him to, but mostly he will be playing in the centre of midfield. Four-star current, five-star potential, 21-year-old Paraguayan. Decent. Next up was Sergei Lepic, who I would not have signed if, well, you'll see you'll see in the future. 9.75 million quid centre-back. Um, he will probably be third choice. Maybe even do we drop Bruno Cesar and play this boy. Maybe we do. Maybe we don't. Three star current. Three and a half star potential. Physicals are fantastic. Mentally he's decent as well. Apart from the aggression. And uh, technically he's okay as a centre half. 20 team work. 17 work rates. Fantastic. Alongside the 16 tackling. He's a decent option. At the very least he'll be a good backup if not a starter. Jiri Schlup will be our starting left wing back. 13 million quid from Victoria Plaisen. He is natural there. That's the main thing. I wanted somebody who was natural in that position who would come in and just play the best of their ability straight away without having to adapt to a new position. Three-star current, four-star potential, 20 years old, check. Um, I'm surprised he's not an international just yet, but his physicals are what first attracted me to him. Um, his technicals are decent as well, particularly in the attacking sense. His mentals is where he suffers a little bit. Hopefully he can develop over the course of this season because he will be our first choice. Next to join us is our first choice goalkeeper for the rest of this season, Jesus Alberto Manon from America in Mexico, 16.5 million quid. He's just a step above Klaus Schaber and uh, with the potential to grow as well at 21 years old. He is up there in terms of the best goalkeepers we've signed. I'm not quite the best, I wouldn't say that, but he's getting close there. And if he can develop over the course of this season, he might end up claiming that title. Next to sign us was probably, it's probably a backup player for 20 million quid. Peter Davelechen. It just goes to show you how much money we had where I don't anticipate this boy being in our first 11. He's very, very good though. Really well-rounded physically, really well-rounded mentally. Technically, he's a little bit lacking. He's very much more of a defensive midfielder than any of the other players we've signed, which might end up making him a first-choice player. Three-star current, four-star potential, 20-year-old Russian. We'll see how he develops over the course of this season. Next up to join us was Ayo David. I would have signed him instead of Sergei Lepic, but FC Porto weren't entertaining my bids until the AI went in with a £22 million bid. So we went in as well. He will be our best centre-half at the club without a shadow of a doubt. Three and a half star current, four and a half star potential. 
well-rounded every single wear with exceptional uh, attributes in certain areas like jump and reach, like strength, like bravery, like anticipation. Uh, concentration decisions are 15 as well. 14s across the board in the main technical attributes. And i um, happy to bring him in. He was my first choice in terms of players who would actually join me. And we did eventually get that deal over the line. And finally, 45 million quid. Now, I know you probably looked at him and thought, God, he must have signed an absolute worldie for 45 million. I haven't. Valentin Picard. He, he is our best striker by a country mile. But... £45 million pounds is a lot of money to have spent on this lad. Believe me, I did not want to spend it. He is not a £45 million pound player, but in terms of striking options, it was incredibly, incredibly limited in terms of actually who was interested in us and the terms of quality we were looking at. So a £45 million quid was one of the cheapest fees we could bring in for this sort of level of quality. It's a little bit crazy. It is a little bit crazy, but... He is a good player and no doubt he's going to be good for us. He's got potential to grow. He's got the attributes in the right areas. His passing's a little bit disappointing, but apart from that, anticipation could do some work. He's physically well-rounded. Technically, he's well-rounded as well with his 16, 16, 15 in the main three, dribble and finish and first touch. Technique of 17 is nice to see. Um, but yeah, 45 million quid. I'm not overly pleased with that amount of money. So in terms of the transfer window, we've spent the most money we've ever spent. We do not have the best squad we've ever had. No way about it. We just do not. Um, I'm a little bit disappointed with the transfer window. The quality of player that was available compared to when we were in the Premier League with Nottingham, not, uh, Crystal Palace is so much different. So much different. We were looking at at least one step down in terms of quality in many positions. And um, I think at least defensively we're really not quite there in terms of other saves that we've had with other teams. So um, that will be an area we'll have to look to address in January potentially. And that's a good job. We've still got 45 million quid left and 420,000 pounds available in the wage budget. Now, the reason that has happened is because we have offered the board a mid-table finish and they give me plenty of money and plenty of compensation to be able to do that. So it does increase the pressure a little bit. Every single other time we've been promoted, we've stuck with the minimum of expectations, either attempting to avoid relegation or avoiding relegation altogether. Um, so, yeah, we've, we've put ourselves under a little bit of pressure, but it gives us so much freedom in terms of finances that um, should we need to make changes in January, we can do. And that takes me to the tactic, and this will be it. A little bit different from last season. Once I saw the level of quality at centre-back and striker in particular, I knew for a fine fact I wasn't getting three good players in each position, never mind five, to be able to actually get some strength and depth into the squad. So, central midfield, we were in abundance. So I thought, right, we're going to get the central midfielders in, we'll get the defensive midfielder in, we'll get the attacking midfielder in, and we'll fill up where we scored with really good quality players that we know are available, we know that we can sign, and um, we'll just hope that it works. I haven't played with it yet. We're going to see how it goes today. In terms of our best first 11, this is it. The only surviving player is Roy Martin from last season. He will be our starting striker alongside uh, Picard. But uh, that wasn't out of choice. That was out of necessity. The amount of strikers out there, it's just not there really. So yeah, it is a little bit of an untried tactic. We'll have to wait and see how it goes. We've got the four defensive players in the centre areas. We've got the four supporting players in the wing backs and the midfielders. And then the three attacking players in the diamond up top. We'll wait and see how that goes. It might be absolutely terrible. We might end up having the worst season we've ever had under any club because it is a bit of an untried tactic. But we've got some good players, particularly the attacking midfielder. He's the best player at the club by a country mile. Hopefully he can carry us. Um... And we've got Watford away from home in the first game today. So my assistant manager reckons I should be starting Lepic at centre-back over Bruno Cesar. And I think I agree. So that is what we are going to do for the first game today. Other than that, it's the exact same uh, first 11. And I'm not starting Miguel Ramirez over Roy Martin. That might end up being a change we make eventually. But at least for now, Roy Martin's going to get the nod and start up front for us today. So there you come at us with a 4-2-3-1. Uh, Jonathan Aziz, I do recognise. We were in for him at 1.22 million quid. We could have signed him for Roman Vlasek playing on the left-hand side. He is just a fantastic... I mean, we haven't got a striker of his quality at the club. And we signed him for 5.5 million quid uh, about seven years ago. So um, I think it shows you maybe the, <laughs> maybe the amount of quality is sort of, you know, sort of drying up as we've 
stolen a lot of it from clubs that might have still had players available for us at this point. But never mind, we'll get the kick off. Let's see how we get on in our first game in the Premier League. First highlight of the game is a corner for Watford. It's played in the back post. We do manage to just about get it clear. But uh, Watford keep the ball alive with Aziz. He whips it to the back post. It's uh, plast on, whips it back in. We do manage to get a clear. Is this highlight continuing or is it over? It was over. Free kick for Watford. Vlasek plays it in. It goes over the top of everybody. And Alexandre Mendes gets his first goal of the season for Watford. And puts them 1-0 up. That was a really disappointing free kick. No way should this be bouncing in the box. Never mind to an unmarked man at the back post. But here, got to take it where we can. 20 minutes in, we are 1-0 down. 30 minutes gone. We have ourselves another highlight. It's Watford again on the attack down this right-hand side. I'm not even sure what his name is. Tomlinson plays it inside to Plaston. Switch the play to the left for Alam. And they're, they're just toying with us. To be quite honest, we're not winning this ball. We're not pressing them quick enough. Um, and they are keeping possession really, really well as Tomlinson wins it again down the right-hand side. Gonzalez can't win a ball back. There we are. There's the there's the ball down the left-hand side for Alam. We get out of him, but Mendes is our back post. And we're 2-0 down. <laughs> we're 2-0 down. I don't like it. Let's skip the replay. Another highlight now, 42 minutes in. It's Watford again on the attack. Sancherino should probably do better with that opportunity. Go on by the match stats. We're not in this game at all. At all. Let's kick off for the second half. First highlight of the second half comes 61 minutes in. Can we have an attack? Just, you know, just give us a little bit of hope. A little bit of hope. Schlup to David on this left-hand side. Gonzalez. Nice little triangle there. And Roy Martin picks it up and gives the ball away. Watford win the ball back and play it well to Tomlinson. On this right-hand side, he whips it in. It's cleared only as far as Plaston. And uh, I think it's fair to say, boys, we are getting really dominated. Obviously, this is a brand new squad, brand new tactic. It's going to take some time to be able to get, uh, get a familiar with the players and familiar with ourselves. But this is not good early signs. And um, we're going to have to see how it goes throughout the first 10 or 15 games as Roman Vlasek gets them 3-0 up. Um, we've got some real, real issues to think about here. We'll look to make some subs. Um, we'll bring on Bruno Cesar for Sergei Lepic. We'll bring on Petter Devishin for Janice Bowman. And we'll also bring on Malango up top for Roy Martin. So yeah, disappointing first game, obviously. Really, really disappointing. But we've just got to ride it out and hope that we can start putting some wins together. There we are, Watford 3, West Brom 0. Ooh, I'm nervous. So a disappointing first game in the Premier League. Looking forward to the next episode. We'll probably come back for the Huddersfield Nottingham Forest gameplay. Two of our former sides. Um, hopefully by that point we've got some form together. We've got uh, the tactics sorted. And uh, hopefully we've put ourselves under pressure. Mid-table finishes required. Um, hopefully we can do just that. But anyway boys, if you have enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a like. And if you are enjoying my content, get yourself subscribed. But until next time. Take it easy.